Uh, European project. Then we have uh, Alexandra Bossonet from uh, Tech Youth Foundation, one of the organizations that uh, are part of our case study and that we will present today, the organization from Spain. Then we have Elena also from Interface 3. Um, she will be presenting the best practices uh, on gender and IT. Ella Elsbieta from Poland, uh, from FRSI, also one of the the organization that we are screening today. Esther is also from the Youth Foundation Spain. Kathleen is a gender specialist that works together with um, Interface 3 on a stereotypes workshop. Um, Luini, I have to check on my file. <laughs> uh, Luini, I think you are. Or maybe Hello. you can. Yes. Hi. Yes. Hello. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, Elena, we are here. Okay, okay. Okay, just I'm presenting everybody. Um, then we have uh, Luini. Uh, let me check, or maybe you can shortly present yourself because I don't find back the information now for the moment. So, why did you join this uh, webinar? Because your name is not uh, maybe the email name. Uh, okay, I think you were the one for one from those that they. Uh, Inscribed uh, very at the last moment. Okay, let me see. Okay, I mean, don't have a lot of information. You're a student uh, and you're interested in cybersecurity. Okay, um, and then we have uh, Marius. Is uh, also going to present the project from uh, from Poland, and we have Nuria Mazdeu from uh, Barcelona. And uh, she's, um, she works at the communication department of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. She's a public research, um, it's, a, it's a public research center. She's uh, collaborating on, on uh, outreach efforts and they would like to know on how to get more women to their project. So uh, let's go for it. It's 10.32. Um, we already finished our, our information, our round of uh, Presenting everybody very well. Let's go to the slides. So, just a second. I'm going to my PowerPoint, and here it is. So, the title of this webinar: ICT Learning Projects um, Screened from a Gender Point of, of View. As I said, it's part of the Unite IT project organized by Interface Three, and these are the logos of this organization that we are screening today from uh, Spain, the Youth Foundation, and the Society Developed Foundation from Poland. Okay, um, Laurence, I give the word to you because uh, you are going to present us what is uh, Unite IT. Um, do you want me to pass you the ball or do you have slides or you do it yeah, I have one. I have one slide. Okay, so let me pass you the ball or take the ball yourself because you are. Laurence, you are on mute, Laurence. Yeah, can you have, can everybody hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, super. Uh, let me share my desktop. Um, okay, can everybody see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So, hi everybody, and we're very happy to be. Uh, involved into this webinar, this first one. So thank you uh, to Liz for the great work and the extensive work you've been doing. Uh, we'll be presenting Unite IT, so which is a project uh, at the European level which, uh, which aims at uh, creating a network, European network, involving various actors and stakeholders uh, in order to contribute to overcome, uh, overcome a digital divide and from promote digital competencies at risk of exclusion. So this is a big uh, description of this, this uh, project. Um, what do we do actually? So we have set up um, a network of people who have extensive knowledge and a professional uh, 
knowledge of uh, digital design. And uh, one of so the main one of the main um, missions of this uh, project is to share best practice. We have developed a tool in order to gather these good practices and policies in Europe. These practices we have we have about. 60, uh, 60, 65 were put in a database now, which uh, which has been set up on the um, Unite IT website. So the main goals of this is to share various practices in various European countries, and the aim is to overcome digital divide. What we want to do actually is to enable people to go and uh, be able to see, sorry, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm speaking dif uh, dif with difficulties because I have a big return. I'm, I'm hearing my voice, sorry, it's a bit, it's a bit tricky for me. Uh, can you, every, <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> so uh, exchange is best practice, also sharing knowledge, and as I mentioned onto the, the, the slide, the set of debates in key topics, exactly what we'll be, we've been doing with webinars. Uh, we have four working groups, gender and equality. We have uh, certification. We have uh, education and one which I'm missing. Uh, youth? Youth and employability. Thank you, Elena. So these are the various working group uh, setting up debate in these key topics in this, um, in this aim of overcoming digital divide. And of course develop new strategy partnership, meaning that we would like to be a link between various partners in Europe in order for them to maybe set up key uh, strategic partnership and work towards a common goal. So in a nutshell, this is what Unite IT is about. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, to ask. Yeah, if we have some more. Um, I think because uh, Elena is uh, that you are on echo because Elena is also maybe if Elena puts herself on mute, then we will be able to continue uh, to hear to know not hear an echo. Okay, so uh, can you pass me the ball? Yeah, We're going to the next point of the agenda. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, sharing. Oh, just pass me the ball. Yeah, yeah, no, but I need to get back to the screen. <laughs> that was all. Okay, there it is. Okay, thank you. So, here we are again. Okay, so um, I'm responsible, let's say, for the um, uh, coordination of, of this uh, work group. Um, you can find it at the link, and of course, uh, if you want to join the group, which we very much welcome, you can uh, send your request. Uh, what we have been doing in the first place is uh, measure the gap in the gender ID. I will talk shortly about it later. We did it on a first meeting we had in Malta. Uh, then we also try to um, give an overview of, of why uh, girls are not are uh, not uh, interested in, in ICT. We have written an article about it, and we are also going to give a short overview to to this webinar. Uh, then we said, uh, what can telecenter ICT learning centers do? Because this network is uh, about uh, ICT learning centers, which are uh, libraries uh, and associations that have uh, courses in, in digital literacy and also advanced computing and professional training. And uh, this webinar is, of course, uh, one of our main activities. We're going to have more. For the moment, we only have 11 members, um, but uh, we are waiting for the webinar assistants to, to join our, us. 
Okay, so what are we going to do today? As I said, a uh, short overview of the current state of the gender gap, why so few girls are attracted to IT, and what, uh, the core of this webinar is about what can be done to attract more girls into IT. Uh, we're going to do it through uh, our two case studies. Uh, one is uh, an IT learning project from Spain uh, about the youth, uh, sorry, disadvantaged youth. And one is uh, an awareness raising uh, project for high school, school students from Poland. Uh, and then we are going to exchange best practice with Interface 3, the organizer of this uh, webinar. And finally, we would like to talk about uh, a new European funded project that we would like to start up uh, from, this, uh, from this working group. And our uh, working title is uh, Phoenix Europe. So, gender and IT gap in Europe. We have uh, a gap at different levels. Uh, one is at the level of usage. Uh, you might think that uh, there, there is no problem. Uh, women and, and men use computers equally. But when you go uh, to see what kind of usage they are doing, you are seeing that 50% uh, more men than women appear to have higher computer skills. Uh, this is uh, installing programs, uh, configuring um, the security settings, um, installing, updating operating system, uh, stuff like that. So um, the dark blue is, is the gap. Uh, you can see that it is even so at, um, at the young ages of 16, 24, it's, uh, 15. It's a bit higher uh, for adults, but not much. So uh, we think that uh, data center, ICT learning center, definitely have to have to have, to have a job there uh, to not only teach uh, digital literacy because we can see that even uh, that uh, in fact at the medium level and a low level, uh, women are doing better. Uh, young women are 10 percent better than, than young men at that level, uh, but it's only for the for the lower levels of, uh, of schools, and that's a problem because 90% of the job will require these basic computer skills in the future and at least basic computer skills, well, the trend is to ever higher skills, so we have definitely a job to do to, uh, to have more women having higher computer skills. Then we have a gap at the level of higher education, which means that not so many girls are uh, opting for uh, studies uh, in the field of ICT, that is uh, computer science, but also engineering, mathematics, uh, those kind of studies that uh, well, mm, well uh, go for a, a lot of uh, a lot of jobs these days. Uh, only if we would look at uh, all um, all uh, graduates in, in Europe, only 20% uh, of those are, are women in ICT related fields. So the two that I just named: computer science, mathematics engineering. Um, yeah, that's just a fear, sorry. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the main, um, let's say, challenge uh, to get people into computer science or at least into graduate levels uh, where most jobs are. So these are main challenges. Because the forecast is that uh, there will be about 900,000 computing vacancies by 2020. Uh, it comes from this graph, as you can see. Uh, it goes uh, from 200 to or nearly 1 million jobs, vacancies uh, for, for 2020. So in less than 10 years, it will uh, triplicate, uh, almost uh, quadruplicate. Okay. And then, of course, uh, at 11, I'm hearing some noise there. Um, can you put yourself on mute, Laurence? Laurence, or who is there? Okay. Anyway, um, as the IT workforce, um, we of course, have, as we have not a lot of students um, uh, studying um, IT or ICT studies, we don't have a lot of women uh, streaming in into these jobs. Um, that's what we call the leaky pipeline. No, if you don't have uh, adults, uh, adults and interested, you won't have a lot of. Um, of students, and if you don't have a lot of uh, students graduating, you won't have a lot of people in this IT workforce. So uh, here we see that uh, it's even less, no? It's only 15% because some of the people that study uh, ICT related field don't, don't go into this field, so it's a bit less, it's only 
um, of all uh, ICT specialist occupations are, are held by women. And this is a graph that um, that gives an overview of, of the main European countries, EU 27. And you can see it's uh, average, it's 15, but in some countries, like for example, uh, Lithuania, it is uh, it is quite high in Iceland. Uh, it is also uh, quite high. It is it is a little higher, let's say. Um, and you can also see um, how it is in, in some uh, countries of the world. There is in red over there, and um, I don't know if there is any other. Uh, no, I don't think it's only it's only United States that we have. Yeah. So United States, uh, 25. Okay, so. Uh, hi, can you put you on, on mute because I'm, I'm hearing some noise over there. I don't know who it is. <laughs> anyway, um, so why are so few uh, girls attracted to study IT? There are many reasons. Uh, we have written a, a large article about it, but the time of this webinar is not long enough to explain everything in detail. We're going to explain the most important factors. So. Um, there is a big societal belief that say that society uh, on, on itself believes uh, computing is masculine, computing is for boys. And uh, I think you recognize this is from the film, uh, the network, the social network. So this is the image uh, that people have, uh, guys uh, sitting in nerds, let's say, uh, sitting in their room. This is uh, Zuckerberg when he was told on Facebook in the movie. Um, but uh, a lot of research has um, found that there is no innate talent that girls are not, let's say, naturally less interested or would have uh, uh, less flair for computing or would be less talented. Um, in fact, uh, if you see at high school level, they are, they are equally uh, interested in, in science. Uh, if they do the tests, uh, they score equally. So this is very important. Uh, it's really a wealth of of, uh, of research that has uh, proven this. Uh, even girls uh, largely um, score a bit better in mathematics than boys. So there is uh, something else going on. And what's going on? Well, of course, it's uh, the stereotype, the view of uh, computing being masculine. So uh, to understand. Uh, very well how this is working. We have to explain a little bit more about stereotypes and what they are. So stereotypes are enforced by, by our brain. Our brain tends to think in, in categories and makes one of the complex things more simple. And uh, a group is complex, so it tries to describe some characteristics of the group to what is what are stereotypes. And these stereotypes lead us to think that all members of the group are similar, which is easier to process uh, by our brain. You know? They can be positive, you know, a positive stereotype. It's only Germans are hardworking people, or Asian students are good at that. But they can also be negative. You know? French are chauvinists, uh, African Americans are less intelligent. So stereotypes are not only on gender, they uh, are working on different fields. Um, but gender stereotypes about, about the technology are negative, and certainly they are negative for females. And this uh, image that I'm going to show explains it all. Okay, a boy that makes an error of the suck at math, a girl, well, girl suck at math. So you suck at math, girl suck at math. This is uh, how it works. Um, but um, they're not only negative gender stereotypes. Gender stereotypes are not only describing, like describing the characteristics of the group, they're also prescribing, so how you should behave. Um, and uh, one example is uh, that boys are but descriptive, no? But they also should be adventurous, sure of themselves, brave, the, the typical uh, boys don't cry, no? They're also independent and uh, good mechanics and should be good mechanics. And girls, uh, though they are caring, so they are good nurses, so they expect to be and should be sensitive. Their emotions should be emotion, and they should be social and good communicators. So, what has it do with computing? Well, computing has evolved uh, around engineering and around uh, mathematics. So, uh, these disciplines are already seen as kind of cold and abstract which has nothing to do with the emotional and sensitive uh, 
um, being of, of women, it has to do with mathematics, you know, that has uh, engineering, um, good mechanics, uh, all these things are thought uh, to be for boys, uh, so almost unconsciously women think uh, that they're not for one because, uh, uh, well, uh, stereotypes prescribe their behavior and if they want to be a good female, um, they should uh, behave uh, as a stereotypes because uh, this is how uh, society blocks you, how you get, um, get appraisal by society and human beings want to be, uh, want to be loved, let's say, want to receive the appraisal of their, their environment. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, and that's not the only thing. Uh, computing also has an image problem, you know, this little guy sitting in a room, the picture of Joe Zuckerberg in the dark, you know, alone, uh, lonely, while girls are social, uh, social, told to be social, you know, boys can be independent, and they want, you know, um, they want, uh, as the type say, uh, girls should also be uh, taking care of themselves, good look, looking, while this is not the fact uh, of the, for the image of a of an IT guy. So, um, this is how it works. Uh, a girl that is interested in computing automatically uh, thinks it's not for her uh, because uh, she would like um, betray her, her femininity. She would transgress her femininity. In fact, uh, you can see also that the images of the girls that are, that are interested in computers are, are kind of punky, 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 how can you say? <laughs> punky at uh, closing, you know, they are, they are um, closing. So, um, this is the main reason. Um, there are more reasons, but it's very important to understand it. Uh, let's see our, our time for a second. What can be done? Uh, so, we are very good on schedule. Sorry, I'm a bit stressed because we have a very big, uh, Big agenda. Uh, we would also like to keep the questions, if possible, uh, for the end. Uh, what can be done to attract more girls? Uh, so, how can we overcome this? Um, uh, well, um, we are not going to give an overview of, of everything that can be done because we have written also a big article about it. Our approach for this webinar is to do it through. Um, the, um, the organizations that we invited, that we uh, screened on gender, that we are doing a gender consultation, and we are going to give the examples of, of uh, what can be done through, uh, well, uh, directed to what they are doing. So the first case study is Spain. Um, the project that we, we screened uh, is called Initial Professional Qualification Program uh, for Assistance of Computer and Network Maintenance Technician, okay? So um, I'm going to present the project uh, and we'll ask uh, Alexandra for, for some feedback. Um, and then I'm going to also going to well, do some of the gender consultation, okay? So the project, what it is about? Uh, it's uh, directed to school dropouts, so uh, Young people between 16 and 21, I think it can be uh, until 24, but especially 21, uh, that have not finished uh, high school uh, or that cannot access it because of the, because they don't have the skills uh, in terms of the language or they just uh, decided to leave. Uh, they have groups of 10, from 10 to 14 students. Majority come from disadvantaged communities. Um, and the main problem, and that's also why they approached us, uh, the large majority of their students, I mean, what we the large majority, it is sometimes they don't have any girl in the program. So if there's a girl, maybe she's the only girl, or I think the most few ones that they have two or three girls uh, inscribed. She also sometimes is not in the course. But most of the girls seem to, to finish the course and have, uh, have good, uh, uh, good approval. A good uh, marks, let's say, but the problem is that there is not a lot of in-stream, so we are going to to uh, consult them on that today. The course is uh, it's not a workshop; it's a full academic year, 900 hours, and uh, it's not all about technology. Uh, there are also some general knowledge because they have to also get some some basics uh, uh, in language and mathematics. 
Uh, there is a lot of uh, social uh, training, social professional integration, let's say. Uh, and there is also an internship uh, of 200 hours uh, practical internship in, 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 a, in a company or in an association. And uh, what's also happening is that uh, because it, it is like 50-30, let's say, uh, the large majority of the part of the of the technology courses are given by male teachers, while the female teachers are more uh, given the general knowledge. Um, I would like to ask Alexander if she wants to add something or give some remarks, because this is the well, I, I also have a little video where you can, uh, well, so it's only two minutes where you can see a bit uh, live the, the workshop uh, going on. And uh, maybe uh, Alexandra can comment something on it if she wants. So this is uh, just a little clip. Well, uh, I would only well, I would reinforce what you said. The thing, the biggest difficulty we have is in the point of recruitment, uh, because then the method methodology we use in classes uh, already touches themes of gender, uh, working with them stereotypes, prejudice, not only about gender as about race and other themes. Um, and we believe the the bigger difficulty we have is in recruitment because in the group we always are very conscious of the paper of girls. The difficulty it is to bring up groups which normally maximum we've had three girls in a group. Uh, many years we had only one, and we have to work the methodolo the methodology so we can maintain them until the not only that they enter the course but they can finish it finish it and then go into higher studies and keep on the ICT um, career. I wouldn't add much more than that because you already explained it quite well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alizona. So uh, let's try to to help you. <laughs> um, uh, we have, um, sorry, we have ordered our recommendations um, uh, in uh, into sections. Uh, First, first of all, the biggest problem that we see that we have is, is let's say, the, the recruiting techniques. You know, so they're coming in uh, more from the schools uh, and from the psychology uh, centers and social system centers. But um, as we understood, uh, there is not going a lot of uh, recruiting in, in the community, let's say, in the, in the area where you're living. Lisa, um, Lisa, can, yes? can we interrupt you just a minute? Because I think uh, uh, Laurence, um, has a question about the the program and the project. Uh, yes, yes. Is it possible to ask questions? No. We can't hear you, Laurence. I think you're on mute. I, Laurence, should I continue then? I will continue, okay? We'll have your question later. So, uh, one of the proven uh, recruitment, well, one, we have some of them all, you know, from uh, uh, these uh, are coming from, from research, let's say, and uh, a lot of research has been done in the States, and they have also um, been done um, in uh, these kind of disadvantaged communities, you know, or with girls of color. Um, so, um, one of the, the main, um, let's say, uh, techniques um, would be uh, to organize not just, uh, let's say, announce immediately the program, but do a kind of special recruitment workshop where they get, uh, let's say, they get, they get enthusiastic about, uh, about uh, computing. And uh, we will get some video examples on, on some ideas that we think uh, that have been done in the, in the United States that we think that could be, could be done maybe in, in summer. Before the before the course starts and uh, and be very attractive for, for girls. Okay, uh, so connected it with the interest that girls already have. You no, know? um, so um, yeah, if they like sewing, then why not do an e-textiles workshop? You no, know? uh, if they like sports, maybe uh, you can develop an app 
uh, we want to witness acts or something, something similar. Um, second. Uh, yeah, don't wait for them to come. You have to really actively recruit girls. We really, uh, go to where they are, talk to them, uh, go to groups where, uh, where there are already already a lot of uh, females uh, present, you know, in, in courses that they may be on dancing courses or music courses or other other workshops where they are already maybe give a presentation of the project or invite them um, invite them to come. Um, to the to the workshop or to the I don't we don't think that it's possible to immediately recruit them for the program. I think uh, the recruitment techniques should be for uh, for this uh, introductory work work group. Okay, so really personally talk to the to the girl that would not think of enrolling but that you think might be interested. And very important, invite them in group because they don't want to be the only class to invite them with, with people with girls that already know each other. Uh, groups of friends. Okay, so Alexander, what do you think? <laughs> of these no, I could, I could add that one of the things we do here is uh, normally in the inscriptions uh, we have to prioritize uh, those students who really have interest in IT because they already have a high level of dropouts of school and in the case of girls we always prioritize if a girl who comes with a friend or with some some member of the family, sister or cousin, whatever, uh, so they can enter in pairs in classes and exceed even though one of the members hasn't that high interest in informatics because we know that they will uh, achieve more results and stay until the end of the course if they are not alone in the group. Okay. The other comment I wanted to say is that uh, the neighborhood where we work, we have a community which has uh, even bigger stereotypes about gender because we work mostly with uh, youth from Pakistan, Morocco, South America, and in some communities it's even harder if they don't come with someone to participate in this project because parents know that the, the group of boys is very high and don't like to have their daughter alone in a group. So with a, so high percentage of of boys. Yes, we were going to uh, especially talk about this uh, later, um, especially in the father going to do some on that. Um, I just would like to show uh, some examples, the small video of 30 seconds that I that I thought um, of of these kind of workshop that we think people do. Uh, maybe the, the best example is in textile workshop because you can kind of build in yourself the, the level of of, um, of IT knowledge or uh, you can build it up let's say um, so let's let's have a look at, at this course uh, from Chicago Yeah. So, and then we have another one, uh, game design uh, workshop. This group uh, is is not only working on IT; they're also working on on, on uh, engineering, um, but they are doing also a computer uh, workshop. So let's watch this one too. Okay, so this was um, the game design workshop, and then we have one more. Um, well, maybe the game design workshop could be it's maybe sort of for smaller girls, but I think it would be also interesting to, to let's say let them grow up with the center and, and uh, go into the course later. 
because um, it could be one of the reasons also that they don't have any history with the center. Um, and then we have the, the app development. Yes. Can you put yourself on mute, please? Okay, thanks. Microsoft is a nonprofit organization with a mission to create the next generation of tech innovators by teaching girls about the future. Not just about coding, it's also about creating and developing self confidence in young girls. Okay, so these were the three videos. Um, Alexander, do you have, uh, do you have any uh, reaction on, on, on these uh, proposals of ours? Uh, of course, there are a lot of other uh, this, this three proposals. So, uh, no. I believe the idea of summer workshops is quite good because we have a barrier in what is the imposed curriculum by the Spanish education department because we have the number of hours assigned by signatures and many times the signatures that motivate more girls, we don't, we can't go more, much more ahead because we don't have the time. So I think it would be mm -hmm. a, a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe um, we are thinking that that these kind of workshops should come from another program, and, and one of the ideas of, of this work group is is to find financing at European level to do such kind of workshops in summer summer camps uh, for girls. So uh, and then they, later later they could could go into the courses that are more uh, let's say formalized by, by the government. This is our idea. Okay. So next, go, let's go to the. Um, so the next uh, recommendation, uh, of course, uh, what can be done? Girls don't have enough role models, no? Especially girls uh, from the advantaged community don't know a lot of uh, people that uh, aunts or mothers or sisters, or, well, even, even I think they don't know a lot of male role models. So it's, it's, it's kind of uh, important to, to very much work on, on role models. And also on peer mentorship, you know, because the youth are very influenced by their peers. They they see peers as guides. So if you if you might find the uh, girls or the girls that did, did, did the course before, uh, invite them to the course uh, or or uh, invite them to to help with with recruiting. Uh, it's very important uh, that you have. So there are different um, tactics uh, for providing role models. You know, to sum them up, maybe it can be all. Um, uh, adapt, uh, introduce a new project, but generally these are the, say, uh, showcase exciting things that other adolescent girls are doing with computers and these kind of videos maybe well then you might be translated or you can do a search for that, but there was really a lot of going on last year on, on these kind of game development and, and, uh, and e-tech styles and it's really, uh, there's a wealth of, of videos on that. Uh, or look for other other uh, collectives that might be doing this in Barcelona and, and uh, invite them to present the project. Invite a peer as mentor, so let them, uh, let's say, uh, um, come to the course and, and um, or present their project or even be there as, as tutors. Maybe you can use it as a as a kind of uh, internship or as a kind of a practical uh, exercise. Um, and yeah, we also thought about about speakers. No, I mean these these girls uh, when they start for the course, they want want to work in a kind of profession, try to localize uh, women that that are doing the kind of professions that you are trying to to get these these girls in. Uh, try to also find the girls uh, that are relatable to them to, in terms of of. Uh, of um, income and, and, and race, it's very important that uh, that they come from the same community, so they are relatable. If, even if you don't, you don't find girls, it's more important uh, to have somebody relatable from their computer, uh, from their community, and to have a woman that is uh, someone from a very uh, rich background, let's say, uh, for a woman, I mean. 
Uh, and yes, of course, in general, uh, that's more like to break the stereotypes, no, that informatics uh, uh, is not for women. You can tell inspiring stories of, of women that, that have achieved things, no, not only far back in history, but, but uh, how women contributed to the invention of, of Wi-Fi, of mobile phones, uh, things like that. This is very important thing that, that girls know that, uh, that are in their life, let's say. Okay, so providing role models is our uh, is our second uh, recommendation. Uh, any reaction to that, Alexandra? Well, just say that usually the profile of, of students we have, they don't have really long-term goals. No, it's hard. Mm -hmm. We are trying we are trying to achieve that they get back into what is studying. So each year, the the role models we we try to be really proper and so normally it's ex students that have already done this this uh, studies in this center or in another center but of the same level so we could really think of prioritizing ex students but girls which would come each year to talk to them because usually we ask for volunteers but girls normally aren't the ones who do this uh, experience tellings, and so it would be important to prioritize this experience from girls. Part of also some finance. Yes, Helena, tell me. Please, yes. uh, um, sorry, I, I have a question. We can't hear you very well. It's scattered. No, it's scattered. We can't hear you very well, Helena. For Alexandra. Um, what kind of uh, materials do we have to use? Hi, yes, you can, you can hear me right now? Uh, badly, Hello. but I can hear. <laughs> Hello. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, well, what what kind of uh, promotional materials do you use for, uh, for your, for, in the case of organization, of organization of your trainings? I mean, uh, do you uh, mind uh, uh, to, to put, uh, uh, you, you know, film Mailing major mm. or Sorry, I didn't a sort of success stories of uh, a few female uh, who uh, get a job after the trainings. Very difficult to understand you scattered, but yeah, she is uh, asking uh, about if you use any uh, brochures of le or leaflets uh, to attract them and how they are. No, correct, Zina? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I can. I have some uh, uh, pro uh, technical issues. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to this question later. Okay, we can uh, try to to get another mic or so. Maybe not connect on the phone, Irina, because you have to talk later, and uh, that will be a problem. Okay. So. Um, Third recommendation, um, because you're working on mixed groups, no, uh, we would say pay attention to the uncon unconscious biases that are in student student interaction. Unconscious biases have to do with stereotypes. You no, know, stereotypes uh, are are sort of treating girls differently uh, than than boys uh, based on, on, the, on the stereotypes, and they happen uh, in the unconscious sphere. And we have uh, some some of, of the of the ones that most uh, of mostly occur, uh, but I think uh, you are taking care of this because this is what I got from from the photos. You know um, that you should make sure that girls and boys have equal access to the more technical roles. You know, if they're working in group or if they're working in pairs, uh, mixed pairs, that it's not only the, always the boy that takes up the more technical or the more um, let's say more difficult task. Okay. But uh, I think you are taking care of this already. Um, just a general, general remark, general consultation for mixed groups. And also the same, be on the lookout for unconscious biases that can happen in teacher-student interactions. Okay, I know you are very, uh, let's say, uh, very conscious about it, but really stereotypes are so strong that they happen uh, without one thing unconscious. So really, it's very important for the teachers to be well educated on how stereotypes work, uh, so they can avoid kind of a conscious bias. You know, uh, uh, one of the main mistakes is uh, is that that uh, teachers confuse uh, 
the lack of experience of girls, not because boys have more experience because then because of the gaming uh, history, you know, and now it is changing, but before uh, they, they they get used to computers, uh, changing the, the graphics cards, communicating with, with other boys, you know, and, and they're, they're not scared, let's say, of computers because they have a habit from an early age. So they have uh, they have more ability because they have more experience. So don't confuse pre experience with ability. It's not because a girl um, is not interested in or is scared by something that she's she's not good at it. And an example of it is, is one of, of of your technology teacher told me like yeah we have to we have to accept it. No, it is true. The girls as soon as soon as you put the black screen, they don't like it. They 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 are not interested in it. You know? so it's not that they are not interested in it. It's just not that they don't have the ability. So lack of interest is a lot of time a lack of experience. So it's very important to to know to notice this. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, another recommendation we think we should we should improve the relevancy of of the curriculum and we'll make it we'll make it more close to the world. You know? Uh, or try to do it in, in your um, in your um, workshop also in your recruiting campaign. Two of the methodologies of, of these are uh, um, connecting the, the curriculum to previous interest and knowledge we already talked about it. You know, so if, if you can build on something you already know, okay, these are proven pedagogies also. Um, connect the curriculum also to, to solving real life problems that they might have, you know, in, in, their, in their life. Uh, I understand there are very vulnerable people with a lot of problems. So if you could connect these with, with something that, that could solve some of the problems, I think you're already doing this, but it's also general uh, methodology. Uh, and also uh, very um, important, uh, girls like to solve social problems. No? So a lot of times we are using uh, the stereotypes for uh, for a good cause, let's say. You know? So uh, girls are social, they are communicative because they're told to be well, okay, let's use it. <laughs> uh, we can't chase everything at the, at the same time. Let's cho choose it also to attract them to computing norms and show them that computing is not abstract. It can also solve social problems and improve um, people li people's lives. So that because that's the kind of jobs girls want to do. And I think you're also doing these, no? engaging pedagogies, collaborative, hands-on. Working towards a final project that they can show to their friends so is also very recruiting. Uh, experiential healing, learning by doing. I think they're also doing these things, but very important for you to move away from the abstract. Okay. And uh, something that is, uh, I didn't know that it exists, that existed, but there are like non wired activities. Okay, you're doing it already, let's say non wired in the sense that you're doing PC from the inside, no? But there are also like um, uh, activities, uh, uh, kind of animation workshops where with parts and groups and, and, and roles, uh, they're learning computation, computational thinking on the website. Well, on our group in Africa, we have some, we have some ideas about this. Uh, so there are some resources. Uh, one group is called CS Unplug, Computer Science Unplug. Uh, and this might also be interesting to do with, um, Maybe on the street or something like that. No, what are you doing? What are you doing this? It's computational thinking. Uh, so I could be interested. Okay, so before we go to the last uh, recommendation and uh, move on to, to the best practices of, of the interface tree, because it's uh, almost 11.20, I'm trying to keep up with the schedule. Um, maybe I'm done, you have something to add here. If not, we'll just move on. Uh, no, about the methodologies, uh, I believe I already said it. Apart from the last one, I'm not really conscious if we do it or not. That would be with some other teacher than me. But the other proposals, we already do them for the whole group because they're really necessary for this profile of, of students. That's it. Yeah, well, this this um, work, this, this webinar is, is is made through. Uh, let's say it's it's uh, also a bit in a general view, no? So it's uh, it's based on your case study, but we also want it to be useful for other people that are might maybe not do. Okay, so <laughs> that's why. Uh, <laughs> but I warned you about it. It's not that we are criticizing something that you aren't doing or something not at all. So uh, let's move on. Um, okay, so this might be the most difficult general recommendation, but we are very, very um, thorough on it. Um, 
uh, consider single sex education workshops for only for girls, especially because you are mentioning um, cultural problems that these girls have that they don't want, they don't want them to be in the workshop with boys. Apart from that, there has been a lot of research that everything about stereotype threat and unconscious bias completely elim eliminated in these kind of workshops and they have better results. On, on, on all kind of, and uh, in the past three will, will, will uh, share their experience with us because they have uh, opted for, for single sex education in all their courses. Um, uh, I'm going to just qu quickly sum up uh, the list of uh, benefits, what they're exactly about uh, in the past three, we'll, we'll explain it and you can also find it in, in the article. Uh, so, what are they? Increased comfort, uh, girls really uh, say lots of times that they just don't want to be the only girl or are afraid of, of going to a course where they will be the only girl or, or just, and they, they also report on, on single sex educated that they really like it, that it was only girls, so they really feel more comfort, okay? They, increased confidence, very important now because uh, the girls are you know, socialized, educated, uh, as not being sure of themselves, and they always, in all, in all um, research, they always report that they're not so good at it, um, at mathematics, um, even when they have the same results. You know? So uh, they do the same tests in single sex education, and it uh, largely goes up. Uh, they also report that they really learn more, that they have more teacher uh, attention also. Uh, this is also because the conscious bias are, are getting uh, away there. Increased peer support, okay, so um, the girls um, also report that they learn more, more from their peers than in single sex, uh, than in uh, mixed courses. And also they report uh, more wanting to go into a further IT course or even to computer science. So these are uh, a lot of um, so um, we would like to pause the ball to interface three. I hope, Elena, that the audio problems are solved, and you can also ask a question if you want. Okay. Uh, okay. Your can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Do I throw you the ball to the host or to Elena? Okay. Thank you. Elena, do I throw the ball to you or to? Yes. Yes. Thank yes? you. To Elena yes. or to the host? Okay. Okay, I'm I'm finding just finding the document. Yeah, just to so um, interface three has has um, experience exactly with the last two recommendations, well, with, especially with the single sex uh, education, but they also um, have a specific course on 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 this uh, PC maintenance, uh, and they're doing it all, only for women. And they're, they're also not doing workshops; they're also doing large academic courses. Um, they are um, uh, also having a lot of uh, people from the disadvantaged communities, uh, and most of them are unemployed. So, uh, up to you, the face, Elena. Okay. Yes. Can yes. can you see my can you see my yes. presentation? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. This is a slide to present our activities. So, Antifas Three is a, a vocational training center uh, uh, created in 1984 uh, 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 within the framework of uh, equal opportunities for women and men, and uh, we uh, we manage training. Lead diversity jobs for women, yes, and uh, to to more typical uh, female job. Uh, we we also organize projects to to bridge the digital divide in Belgium, and we participate at uh, European projects such as uh, Unite IT. And the past three is a telecenter European member since its creation. Okay, this is uh, just to present in two. In Be aware that, that, that your audio activities. is a little bit scattered. So, Sometimes people cannot hear you well. I think it depends on the memory uh, or on the, on the line of, of the internet. I don't yeah, know. Okay. Yeah, uh, now it's good. So I'm really, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. So, but the presentation is quite clear. So I think is uh, uh, is uh, understandable. Yeah. Okay. Even if you, no, if there just is to a, warn you because a you lack of same uh, blah blah. Okay. 
Okay, we we started to uh, uh, organizing these uh, these uh, training things in 1984, and uh, right now we organize four ICT trainings. Uh, um, will lead to to ICT functions, uh, help desk agents and uh, PC technicians, network administrator, webmaster, and uh, web application developer. And each training uh, uh, is organized once a year for a group of uh, 15 students. Uh, so why we have that for, uh, for uh, um, job seekers, for women job seekers? Uh, of course, because there is a, a, an IT function um, just one minute. Hello. Yeah, sorry, because we are Helena is experiencing many uh, technical problems, so she will come to my computer. Okay. Can you speak finally. Please? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> sorry for this. Um, we tested it before, but I don't know what happened in the meantime. Yes. So anyway. can you? Okay. Yes. Elena speaking. Can you hear me yes. uh, better yes. right much now? Much better. Much better. Okay. okay. Thanks. You can see in the slide the the training that um, organized, and uh, okay, why why we organize that for job seekers? Because of course there is a, um, uh, the IT functions are hit by disaffection from young people, both girls and boys. I mean there is a uh, a lack of uh, professional ICT professionals in, uh, in Belgium right now, and uh, so there is a shortage of professionals in, uh, in ICT. And uh, women in, uh, in career transition are uh, uh, an important uh, and exploited labor source in this uh, mainframe. Um, je peux pas les partager. Uh, Elena, you can't hear anymore. Yeah, in, in fact, w w one of the things that we, we talked before is, um, uh, as you can see, the help desk agent is, is in fact the kind of course that the uh, that uh Foundation is, is, is organizing. And uh, they're putting the, the name help desk, again, uh, using uh, some stereotype uh, socialization of, of women uh, for a good cause uh, because um, if they would do, if they would uh, put like, like, uh, well, the title of the tab would like a PC maintenance uh, um, assistant or network uh, maintenance repairer, uh, they think uh, women would not uh, would not apply. But in fact, they are they are learning the same things because the job, in fact, is to to give uh, PC support. It's not for working in cold center. It's a uh, help desk uh, for PC support, which is the kind of job I understand. Uh, that once once the, 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 the students to come into at the, at the, at the later age in, in, in time. So um, one of our recommendations is also to to recall the name and, and call it maybe help desk or uh, uh, PC support operator or something like that. Get away from from the official. Uh, uh, a very technical title that we could scare up girls. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm here. I'm here. Yes. yes. Uh, of course, from a curriculum point of view, uh, the um, the help desk and ICT technician program is quite particular because uh, we we attract. I mean, uh, we use a little the stereotype because we are uh, dealing with the grown-up uh, uh, women, so we can't really 
uh, you know, fight the, the, the stereotypes they, they do have uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, age uh, of adults. And uh, we uh, stress, underline uh, the, the, the competencies, the social, the social competencies they, they have to use to be a, a good uh, uh, help desk and, uh, and, uh, and technician, uh, and PC technician. Um, and this works. But I think, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you? Yes. <laughs> Okay. okay. So we have for one minute before we move to the Polish. So please keep it short. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a good uh, idea to stress and underline the social, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, skills. Do you you have to do to do you have to have to do this uh, this work? And uh, uh, but of course it's not just uh, these things who attract women to our ICT uh, trainings. Um, we um, we we use a, a target-oriented communication. So we use, uh, uh, for example, images of women in ICT. Uh, we use uh, largely uh, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn, and stress the stress the uh, you know the, the success stories of uh, uh, former students uh, having uh, having get a, a got a, a job. Previously, and uh, I think that of course uh, the 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 single sex uh, the the idea to do this uh, kind of uh, ICT training for just for women is uh, is an important uh, and uh, critical factor of uh, of success. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, maybe Alexandra wants to react on this. Or you have another question before we, we go to the other case study? No, or no. maybe somebody from from the from the public. Maybe it's time uh, to get some small uh, a small interaction, Kathleen, or um, maybe uh, Winnie Nuria, <laughs> who didn't hear you yet. Put your mic on and, and give us uh, your questions or remarks if you feel like, because we promised at the end of the the case we would give you the floor. I. So what, I I have a question for Alexandra. I tried yes. to ask ask it before. Alexandra, what kind of uh, uh, promotional material do you use to organize your your training? I mean, do you do you use an image of of women too, and uh, you of success stories of of former of former? Yes. We we have very clear that we have to use uh, all kind of role models. In our material, and, and we do a very dynamic uh, activity, very practical activities, and we try to be equal in the in the content that we that we give in classes, even in the groups where we don't have any girls. Uh, it's it's a thing that we always are working in because the 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 course has uh, two models, and the B model is is general knowledge and includes uh, working all the orientation, research, and of the personal development, knowledge of social surroundings. Of course. And, and it includes for every group, uh, noise wise, and every year, even though the years we don't have girls like this year, we had uh, workshops uh, about gender and and all these aspects that we have to include. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. If you have doubts uh, about your presentation now. I find it's very interesting more more than that because we also have other projects with IT and people from the community and women with this profile you just presented. Uh, but the 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 groups only with with women um, for me it's a really it's a bit hard no to to work with this idea of forming groups only with with girls. I understand this, and uh, depending on the country, you have laws who can, uh, you know, forbid that because, uh, because for for example, I know that in in, in, uh, in France is is uh, is quite is is very is very difficult to organize such a thing because of the you no know, equality idea of uh, against a positive action. So, 
course, I, I say it because um, there is also a need to foment that, that parents understand that their their girls have to interact with boys now, and we have we do lots of work to explain to them that they should integrate this group, that there's no problem. You know? And if we start doing only girls' groups, it, and it would have to be in another group or in workshops, because for the, the Spanish curriculum, we couldn't do it. But it's like we are trying to make the community understand that they can learn together, and then we create a group which the, the access is only for girls. So that's something I, th I have to think about and mm -hmm. well, we all have to think about and try to process and balance what is the positive we can get from it really is is good enough so we are like not incoherent, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand you. Okay. That's it. Ready for uh, going to Paula, everybody? Um, nobody else has any questions. Uh, can you give me the ball so I can shortly introduce uh, and then give the ball to back to the Polish? Can you give me the, give ball? the ball to yeah. the Central Europe? <laughs> and the fast? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, just a second. So we are here. The Case study from uh, from Poland. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I did not forget to put my mic on mute. No, I hope. Did I? Okay. So, um, uh, Information Society Developer Foundation. We have two members of the of the foundation here, uh, Elzbeta and uh, Marius. Uh, and Marius is going to present the, the project, but we will uh, inter interlocate with, with both of them. I hope uh, he is the he is the um, he is the manager of the project. Uh, and the first thing uh, they asked me is uh, if uh, we can show a short uh, video of the project as an inter introduction before they they um, present the project with their own slides. So. That's what the video. It's a larger video. It's about uh, two minutes, I think. Uh, so here it goes. Link do przyszłości to projekt, w którym młodzi profesjonaliści, młode osoby, które dopiero rozpoczynają swoją karierę, wyjeżdżają do małych i średnich miejscowości w Polsce i inspirują młodych ludzi do ich ścieżki zawodowej. Nazywam się Paula, nie jestem dużo starsza od was, więc no jest dużo tutaj tak mówię na tym, mam 25 lat. Z tego co wiem, to że macie to o tak? Dobrze, i widzę też to wykształcenie. Ja mam już ze sobą pierwsze doświadczenia w biznesie, zarówno w Polsce, jak i za granicą. Założyłam też własną organizację pozarządową. Próbuję się podzielić z młodzieżą tymi lekcjami, które przez te 10 lat, które nas różnią, sama zdobyłam i przekazać im te kilka mądrości i inspiracji. Żeby cokolwiek nie zrobić w przyszłości, żeby mieć szansę na fajną pracę, na lepszą własną pracę i na ciekawszą pracę. Więc fajne, ciekawe, a może też międzynarodowe wyzwania. Wspieram mnie energia i czułam, że muszę gdzieś wyjechać, więc zobaczyć, zobaczyć coś innego, spróbować czegoś innego. Więc trzeba działać, trzeba też umieć wyszukiwać dobrze i wspomagać.
Okay. So I'm going to, uh, to pass the ball to to Marius now, so he can share his desktop and uh, present the project to us. In other words, let's say the video. Okay, thank you, Lais. Uh, thank you for your introduction and uh, presenting the movie. I hope the voice quality and uh, the letters were uh, visible for you. Uh, I'd like to uh, tell you about the project uh, Link to the Future uh, Youth Internet Career. Uh, I am coordinating uh, this project. Uh, now I will try to show my desktop and uh, switch to uh, the presentation. Um, uh, link to the project is, uh, is uh, the project. Uh, which, the goal of this project is to uh, inspire young people to uh, be to study uh, ICT-related professions, or uh, and to build their IT, uh, ICT skills. Uh, it's uh, the target group is uh, young people from rural areas and um, small uh, uh, cities. Um, uh, aged from 15 uh, to 19, this is uh, our main group. Uh, we had experience of uh, two editions of this project, uh, two school years, and the um, purpose uh, this project is uh, uh, partners of this project are Microsoft and Polish American Freedom Foundation, and uh, we have also the support of uh, our ministries. Uh, I would like to tell you about the scheme of the, um, the scenario of the meeting. This is the, uh, actually the project is a series of meetings uh, uh, organized locally. Uh, the um, main uh, point of, the, of, of each meeting is uh, young uh, professional, young professional speech and uh, discussion with uh, young professional. Uh, at the movie, you uh, can see, and uh, you could see uh, um, Paula, uh, who is a um, uh, young ICT professional. She's also a, a manager of uh, in, uh, in their own uh, NGO. Uh, the meeting uh, uh, is based on four main uh, um, components. The first one is uh, warm up. I will uh, tell you uh, about this uh, using photos. Warm up uh, when uh, people are talking about uh, future professions, they uh, are trying to think why they could be good at uh, um, professions that we know that is that are considered to be the future professions. These are not only uh, professions related with uh, ICT, but uh, of course they are. Uh, um, there are a lot of ICT professions among future professions. Uh, after that, there is the young professional uh, speech and discussion with uh, him or her. Uh, this is a picture, and this is, uh, and this is a man, but uh, we have also uh, more women than uh, in ICT um, professions are in Poland. Uh, we have also a quiz, quiz on current situation on labor market and trends. And uh, after that, there is exercise. What is the success? To think what is what uh, the success mean uh, means actually for uh, these young people. Uh, after that, they are writing on post-its what uh, was uh, uh, is the most inspiring for them. And something what is uh, I think important um, for this group uh, is that. Uh, um, Women are writing, girls actually, are writing uh, um, a lot of inspirations about entrepreneurship. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, we have a lot of uh, um, feedback uh, about uh, that, that these meetings inspire about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, um, almost all post-its are from girls. So this is something that struck me. Um, and uh, um, the problem in Poland is, um, as you told, uh, in, in, like in other countries, that we have uh, very few people in ICT professions, uh, and uh, only 4% of students are studying uh, ICT uh, related professions. And it was really, really a big challenge to find uh, 
uh, women to, to this project, uh, but uh, fortunately we have uh, about a, a bit more than one third of the professionals are women, and we try to improve this rate. And uh, this, uh, at this slide you can see the examples of these professions of uh, young professionals. Um, um, results of the projects are, we have the experience of two editions, so uh, we uh, inspired more than 20,000 participants uh, and organized more than uh, 700 meetings. Uh, they are extremely successful uh, in, from the point of view of these young people. Almost all are, are happy about uh, these meetings. 84% uh, uh, of participants answered that the meeting can help them to choose their career path. So uh, they found uh, something useful in these meetings for them. Uh, maybe it's important to mention here that uh, usually the uh, school classes are coming to these meetings. There are no selections in uh, normal class, so this is uh, important. But, uh, we are really glad that 84% uh, found something interesting in this meeting for their careers. And uh, comparing to 4% of people studying ICT, this is something what is also uh, we are proud, uh, proud of that 64% uh, uh, people answered that they, uh, they increased uh, um, their interest, the meeting increased their uh, interest in studying ICT or build ICT skills. And uh, I would like to, to add something, uh, something uh, personal. I uh, was uh, also, I have uh, my personal experience in uh, ICT companies. Uh, I was a manager in ICT companies for seven years, and uh, I know that it was it was a really really uh, big problem to find uh, women uh, to um, IT um, to um, IT professions for, for IT uh, jobs. Uh, even if I uh, tried very hard, it was it was uh, um, among candidates there, there were very few women. This, this was the problem, and uh, during the meetings uh, of the uh, Link to the Future project, uh, uh, there are uh, among uh, 50 to 50, uh, the proportion uh, between uh, girls and boys, um, something like uh, 50 to 50, uh, but uh, girls are more active, I think. This is opinion of our young professionals, and um, uh, at, at average, of course. And uh, uh, they are really interested in uh, entrepreneurship and um, ICT uh, too, but uh, they are looking more about um, this. Is something interesting to say: are looking more about uh, not programming, uh, not about programming, more about maybe more about graphics, computer graphics, or um, uh, on uh, PR in social media, something like like that. So. Um, uh, being a programmer or uh, system administrator is still uh, yes. a problem for girls. Okay. Yes. This is this is why we are <laughs> going to to do these actions. Now we know what is the problem, um, but uh, since it's not their fault, there are a lot of, uh, of factors that that come to this. Um, so as you can throw me back the ball, uh, I have some ideas. We are a little bit behind schedule. Right. Now, so we have to go a little bit quick. Uh, sorry, I would like. Sorry, I have to find it uh, one moment. Yeah, you and just uh, no. go out of the screen and. Oh, here, okay. Yeah. Stop sharing. Yes. Okay, and I would like and to add one, one more. Yes. Please, please uh, allow me to add one more thing that we uh, uh, we are cooperating for this project with uh, Geek Girl Scouts. This is uh, an NGO, which is association uh, only girls uh, who love uh, technologies. Okay. Uh, and this is something uh, very successful. This cooperation is very successful. They are yes. uh, providing trainings and uh, other activities okay. in the project. Well, we I, I will do my gender consultation now, and we can have more uh, reaction on it. But we are a little bit behind schedule now, so we have to give me the mm -hmm. ball. Yes, thanks. 
Just uh, put the ball next to my name and then I will be able to, to go back to my slides. Okay. Oops. Okay, so um, our, my first uh, recommendation um, would be, and it's not really a general recommendation, but um, to increase awareness rating on, on, on ICT specialist occupation much more than, can you put yourself on mute, Mario? No, otherwise I hear you still not see, okay. Um, and um, because there's a difference uh, between ICT specialist occupation and ICT enabled occupations, let's say, so all the professions today are asking ICT, that's why this 90% is coming from also, uh, but this is a very good graph that shows you you know, uh, the more uh, ICT knowledge you need, need or the more business knowledge, uh, and we really understand it's difficult to, to find uh, those people and to find, uh, well, it's not, not, should not be difficult to find a lot of ICT people there, and a lot of need to find the uh, train women, but in general, we think uh, also because uh, that's where the jobs are, and we, uh, we would like to, to go into it, okay, uh, 90% of the jobs uh, will get skills, but the, the skills that are demanded are not digitally, uh, it's higher computing skills. You know? uh, so in, indeed, um, all of them are, are very technical, ex ex except of social media, I mean, these are the new, new jobs. So the more technical skills, uh, uh, let's say your presenters have or using their job, the more I think they, they will inspire young people to, to choose for a job that, that has a future, let's say. No, because this is, is a good map of what is the ICT workforce in, in 2012. No, it's 3% of the European workforce. And uh, this is ICT uh, specialist and ICT enabled uh, together. No, and as you can see, the, uh, the, the large majority of these uh, ICT consultants, systems analysts, developers, Software device managers, these are the ones where, where the, the jobs are, where the gap is also, but is also the main, the main work for us, okay? Uh, just very quickly, because uh, there's a lot of talking about this in general, no 900,000 jobs, but what are these jobs? And these are very recent figures from the 2013 report, okay? And it's even seeing that the ICT practitioner at let's say with less, with lower skills, uh, more like the, the, the help desk and PC um, assistants are, are 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 less in demand, are are, are like it is, it is getting away, and more and more uh, in Europe uh, because these jobs are going offshore, also they're they're, they're getting automated, and more and more jobs, uh, these 900,000 are really jobs on a very high level. Uh, most of them, so I think it's important to to, to try to motivate uh, the young people to 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 get studies in in in, in, in these jobs uh, where there are where there are jobs, let's say. You know? And of course, now we go to the to the gender uh, recommendation: um, increase female role models of the ICT specialist occupation of the among high computing skills. You know, um, we made a little a quick. Uh, the, the most technical profile that I that I have found uh, of the man here, because okay, you have also uh, ICT enabled uh, uh, that are more using uh, graphic design in men, but you can see uh, all these men. These are seven of them are the ones, let's say that that um, uh, should inspire the the, the youth to, to to find a, a job where there are jobs, you know. Uh, if they don't know what to do, let's say. Um, so you can see that the, the, the profile of these is very technical, and, and if you compare with the women, I know it's very hard to find them. I know you do the law, but they're always white raves, and I think maybe you can ask a special grant for it to, to really make a, a research and find them because they exist, of course. There are a few of them, but most of them, I think, will be, will be motivated to, to talk. Uh, I also personally know some women working here, so maybe even <laughs> try to ask a personal connection um, because they are there. They're just uh, they are seeing people fine because they're there. Uh, sorry, and these are the, are the women. Uh, as you can see, most of the, these are the most technical uh, profiles I found because other women are more um, 
women of the video was uh, more in PR, I understand, or they are in communication or in education. Uh, these are the ones that are, um, let's say, um, touching more uh, ICT specialists, but there's, in fact, only one, let's say, that is a computer scientist, which is Ursula, no? and the other are more on online marketing or uh, recruitment. Uh, okay, um, one is also in education. Okay, it's about ICT, but it's not like the, the, the role models that we're looking for for these professions. Okay, and very quickly, um, I understand that your system is that the the, org the local organization can choose from from the school of, of speakers you have to the website, no? And I I have the feeling that the result of it is that. Well, you cannot really control for gender then if, if you are even at your efforts to find one third, they're not really reaching. Because if you see, well, these are the results only of the first, um, of the first edition, I don't know about the second, but the top three that were chosen, uh, no, the top five, let's say, were all men, no? And, uh, so, uh, even if you have the one third, they're not reaching, uh, so maybe you should try to, to change the methodology over there to, to more control for, for gender. Let's say uh, the top three, even two of them were, were tech uh, people. It's a PP. I mean, if one of these top three would have been a woman and, and in a tech role, it would, would have a better result on, in terms of gender. And of course, our main recommendation is please take this opportunity to talk about the stereo, stereotypes, to interrupt them. It's, it's not too late, you know. So. Uh, we think at 20,000 people, this is uh, an opportunity you just can't miss, you know. Uh, there are a lot of gender experts that can do this, and especially, you know, Interface has, has, uh, has a specific, specific project on this. They will talk about it now, uh, when we can uh, exchange best practices. I'm not going to continue here what could be, because this is something that they will explain, and we're all a little bit out of time. So I think that and to interface. Sorry for rushing so much, but we are trying to have this just full agenda done before 12. So, um, oh, and Nuria has to leave. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to share back the ball to, to, uh, okay, to interface. So, uh, they talk about their, about their program, uh, on stereotypes, the kind of problem we think you could be introducing. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? Can yes. you hear me? Okay, yes, good. Yes. Perfect. Okay, hang on a second. So I've, I've shared my desktop. Is, do you all see that? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So I came back to my <laughs> to my desk. Um, so it's a good uh, good transition, and uh, there are, I think there are many links to be made also with uh, the project which which was presented by Marish. Um, what what uh, we did uh, at the beginning of the year, it started in in March this year. We uh, um, um, we did a program called Girls Day Boys Day, and uh, it was uh, a project which was requested by uh, Equality of uh, Ch Chance uh, for Men and Women, done by um, Bruxelles Capitals Region. And the objective was to help you build, make the studies and careers choice based on their passion, basically, and their interest uh, or their abilities, regardless of gender stereotype or what parents or society expects from them. Um, so we uh, actually uh, went into various schools. You see the numbers on the slide. So 10 school, 29 classes. And so we actually were in touch with more than 600 pupils uh, during that time. So it started in uh, in March and finished end of April. So uh, the project description, it's a bit similar to what uh, our friends from Poland were doing. So we would organize two hours workshop workshops uh, in secondary school. So in Belgium, in secondary school, that's where uh, pupils are requested basically to start thinking about their choice, their future study choice or co even even career. And of course at this time they are very, uh, they are very, uh, I would say, not aware of what they can do and they are really, I would say, uh, um, how, how can I say that? Uh, they really live on stereotypes actually. We saw that because uh, Elena and myself, um, 
did, did the, the workshops and we saw that these young people, these teenagers, were really into stereotypes. So uh, usually, a, how would a session would work, uh, workshop would uh, work? Uh, we would start with a drawing session, requesting them. We would uh, actually divide the class into uh, two, three, or four groups and ask them to draw together either a man or a woman or a woman and ask them to uh, make sure we, uh, thanks to the drawing, we understand at one glance what makes, it, what makes the figure a woman or what makes it a man. And from there, we would try to uh, teach them that the only thing which makes a different, the, the difference are actually uh, genital organs. Uh, for example, the, the fact that uh, men have be a beard or, or I would say, uh, yeah, a beard. Uh, they have a penis or, and women all have a period and can have children. That's the only, I would say, ch uh, differences between how uh, between men and women, and then the rest was society uh, based was education was uh, could be linked to religion as well so this would uh, and this would help them actually to uh, realize that a lot of uh, them would uh, relate in stereotype with i mean with stereotype uh, ideas. Then we would have quizzes on jobs as well and, and try to make them understand that, uh, and try, try to see what the situation is in Brussels, meaning that, okay, um, what kind of job, uh, uh, we would, sorry, we would ask them quizzes on proportions. Uh, let's take a, a, an example. Uh, we would say, what about lawyers? Do you believe that there are more men, more men or more female? Uh, or it was a, a mixture that you would find um, between um, a similar amount, and uh, and some, so they, they had in there too. They say, oh yeah, but lawyers, there are more women, and we would ask why, and they would say, yeah, but women like to talk more, and say, oh yeah, isn't that a stereotype? Do we believe that all women like, to, et cetera, et cetera? So we would every time we would pinpoint the fact that they would use stereotypes. Uh, then we would have discussions, of course, around these, and then we ended up the workshops with testimonials. Um, it, it was a film with uh, people who, have, who had made a, a choice, uh, I would say a non-stereotypal choice of career. So we would have, for example, um, a mid, uh, mid, midwife woman, uh, man. So <laughs> we would have a woman uh, mechanics and so on. So it, to, to show them that it's possible. Uh, we had three goals in this. Um, first of all, we would say, first, if you have the idea already of what you want to do, uh, that's good. It's, it's great. And do whatever you like and whatever you're good at, and, and it's going to be okay. Secondly, uh, for those who had not an, any idea of what they would do, to open their mind and say, okay, if you don't con uh, consider all kind of choices, and even if you think, oh, yeah, but that's a, a, a female or a male job, just open your mind and and try to uh, to see beyond the stereotypes. And third objective was also that if people go for I would say a stereotype uh, a stereotype job, well, if someone comes into their environment who has made a different choice to really welcome him or her uh, with uh, nicely and not judge him or her because uh, she or he has made a different choice. Um, second, there was a second part in this project. It was that we uh, actually contacted witnesses in order to come back into the same classes and um, present what they've been, what they are doing, and allow uh, the pupils to ask questions. Basically, in a nutshell, that was the the program. So. If you have questions, don't, you're very welcome. I know it's a, it's a big project, and I've tried to make it short because I know that we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, Marius and, and, and Zibeta, um also maybe on, on my presentation and the consulting, um, please uh, launch your ideas, your doubts, um, questions, clarifications, uh, things you don't agree with. Uh, I can show back some other slides, but officially now the, the work yes. should be ending. So we there, there is one. There is one aspect also uh, that I want to raise into that project is that we had 
it was quite difficult for us and it's something that Laure and Elena had really, I would say, uh, struggled with is to find witnesses uh, to talk, to come and talk uh, because they are professionals and so on. Uh, so first of all, this was a challenge. Uh, second challenge in that is that uh, it was easier to find, um, I would say, women talking about uh, a, a male profession that they, they actually uh, have embraced, if I may say. So we had a pilot, for example, um, a, a plane pilot, a woman, but it was much more difficult to find a man uh, presenting, uh, I would say, a more female-oriented career, like a midwife, like, a, uh, I don't know, uh, somebody taking care of children but and so question, on. Was it difficult to find them or was it also difficult to convince them once you find them? Yeah, find them? Bo both. So this was a double aspect. So both was difficult and uh, because, of course, they are professionals, they needed to find some time uh, to come and discuss. And sometimes people said, no, they were not interested. So this was a double, I would say, a double challenge that we that we actually faced, and that's why it's a question I I had to Elspeth, uh, uh In fact, if I understand well, they they work on a proactive uh, on a request. Here, actually, we go to to schools who don't really request. So you have a number of kids who are actually not more interested than that, and it's very very far from their I would say. Uh, uh, their, their world and their preoccupation. Besides, I guess that your the um, the Polish project uh, also is targeted towards t uh, older teenagers. I think you, you mentioned 15 to 19 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, exactly. And we have the same mm -hmm. problems. We struggle with the same problems. The people who are inspiring and uh, very good at their professions. They are busy, and uh, mm -hmm. not all of them are. Uh, you know, they have uh, good skills of speaking to young people and so on. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of problems in traveling because Poland is maybe not yeah. the biggest country, but it's, uh, uh, the distances are also uh, quite big. Okay. Yes, my, yeah. my, my recommendation would be why, why not try with, with students, you know, um, students that are in last year, uh, students in computer science, uh, maybe they are more uh, willing to, to come and, and testify about why they choose about they are also closer. They are the near peers, let's say. Mm -hmm. So maybe this this could be an option instead that you, you want them to show the professional action. But sometimes it's enough, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. uh, some family member or a peer uh, presents the profession. But uh, I, 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 I just I just want to say something. Uh, I, I'm very I'm much very interested in what. Uh, the, her Polish colleagues uh, mentioned about, uh, I really like the approach of what is success for you and uh, I think it's really, really uh, interesting that that approach because it, uh, it, it enables them to talk about themselves and to see also what's, um, I would say, what is their idea and image of what success is, of what IT is and so on. I mean, let's take IT as, a, as an example. But uh, you get the, I would say, the ball back to them as well, and I think it's really, really positive for us because I believe that next next year we're going to do the project again, and this could be a really a good practice that we could implement as well within the, and, and adapt the project with, the, with that the, that aspect. So I would be very much interested to actually receive from from um, from Poland uh, any material that they could share in order to try to see how we could uh, include that into the project. Of course, you're welcome and to uh, gladly share these materials. And it's not the only one moment in the, during the meeting uh, when they are uh, active because uh, they are also this uh, exercise with professions of the future. Uh, when they are this actually a lottery, they have uh, one uh, name of, uh, of the profession of the future and they try to tell the uh, skills that uh, uh, make them, uh, might uh, cause that they will be good at this profession. So this exactly. is also they are very active. And, uh, quiz is also a uh, group uh, activity uh, and they are really, they really like uh, okay. this part of, of the meeting. But um, what what are your points that you are taking back from, uh, from, from our general consultation? In that case, because for example, if you're saying I, I would be good at um, they start from what is stereotype, you know, and you could also see in the video, you know, a voice says I would be in the IT expert because I'm good at computers. 
I mean, I, I wonder if there was any boy or girl uh, mentioned not so much because uh, you were saying that girls were into communication and into, so if there were any, it would be very interested to, to know the peer reactions from, from boys that would choose, choose more, more stereotypes, female confession or are girls doing, uh, or pro proposing to yeah. be they are not choosing the profession. They, uh, this is a lottery. So you can have uh, the girl can have a programmer, for example, profession, and uh, the boy can have uh, um, a profession of uh, secretary or something, or something like uh, like that. And uh, this is uh, very often during the meetings. This is uh, this point when when the matter of uh, gender is uh, discussed because uh, they are in Polish language. Uh, there is the difference between the names of the professions uh, between women and, uh, and men. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they are uh, some, sometimes uh, surprised that uh, because we give yeah. uh, in, in such cases we give both names. Uh, okay, I, I, I mis yeah, I misunderstood. So in fact, there are kind of aleatory girl, for example, gets programmer. She said, "I would be a good programmer because I can do this and this and this." Okay. I understand. So the boy that was speaking in, in the video that said that I could be a good IT specialist uh, got the part uh, IT specialist. Is, is, is it like yes. that? Okay, yes, that's, yes, a, that's yes. a very good exercise indeed. Mm -hmm. So and they are really very surprised about the, when when the girl uh, uh, receives uh, have a card with with the uh, profession uh, usually um, assigned to women. I mean, I think really this project can can do a lot on on working on stereotypes and on debunking them. Of course, your organization has to find funds and agree with it. But I mean, you you yourself are are constatating that it's a real problem, not to find them. But if it's a problem, I think it's it's up to us to to uh, correct it, no, and not just uh, constatate that uh, yes, indeed, girls are, or yes, indeed, they are. Uh, I mean. I think uh, actions can are there to, to change things. So we would like to, to know your uh, your feedback on 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 joining us uh, in this group. Uh, in fact, I, I would like to have the ball back because we, we would like to end the um, the presentation with with uh, our proposal uh, of Chibix Europe. Well, it's not really yet a proposal, but it's in his, it's a Embryonal form, let's say, uh, and we would like to to look uh, for um, for financing uh, 2014 2015. Okay, where it is? Um, can you mute uh, Laurence because we are hearing you? Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, this group that for the moment has only 11 members, but uh, 11 members that are, um, let's say, uh, very interested. It's also not so easy to join the group in, in the sense that you, we are asking the people to write out their motivation and their uh, willingness to, to achieve our goals. You know? uh, so it's really a working group, I and mean, that's what we want to be. I think with this uh, webinar, it's clear that. Uh, we are working very hard. We have been uh, have been very successful in in, uh, in getting a lot of people on board. So we, we thank you very much for this. Um, but um, yes, this is our uh, let's say our first sketch of the mascot. No, maybe it's also stereotype. Very difficult. Yeah, geeks wear glasses. Yes, it's a stereotype. I know. <laughs> But um, it's just a work title. Um, uh, for the moment, so uh, we are collecting material. We have a Pinterest page where you can find uh, uh, the best material that I'm collecting, let's say, uh, infographics. It's also on, on STEM, so on uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, not only on ICT. Uh, and uh, some are more geared to high school, uh, more geared to girls, and others are more geared let's say, to students to, to get into the, the ICT profession. Uh, there are resources and the graphics and the videos. I invite you to follow it uh, because uh, there are very nice materials. Uh, also, if you want to use some material in your workshop, the best videos uh, are selected here. And then, uh, let's say, this is a best of selection. And then we also have a bookmarking page where there are also a lot of articles. 
uh, it's, uh, it's called Keep It, uh, which you can follow. It will work like the kind of Aradax reader, and each time I am finding something interesting, I put it on, a, on, a, on this list. No, uh, videos, articles, and best of it goes into control. So uh, for the moment, uh, that is that is it. The rest of it uh, we will continue in the group. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, your attention. Maybe uh, we'll have some last questions. This is the moment. Otherwise, I think we'll have to close. And uh, also be sure that you you check our group because there are. Uh, Two or three articles about the content of this uh, of this web webinar uh, that might be interesting for all of you who, to read it. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, let me know and I'll meet you if you have any questions. Okay. Thank okay. you, Lisa. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God.